Hi, I'm James, and in this video we're taking a look at how we can force an install, uh, a clean install of Windows 11 onto unsupported hardware. And what we have here is a Core i5-7500 base system, and what we'll see is if we run a check on here, it reports that we do not have TPM 2.0 support, and the processor is not currently supported by Windows 11. As such, uh, if we are to run the installer either from a USB stick or as an upgrade in Windows, it will fail and refuse to install because it does not meet minimum requirements with the release version of Windows 11. Uh, this may have been different on some of the previews, but on the release version you have to meet the requirements. Um, so what we are going to do is, first of all, we are going to go to download Windows 10. Uh, the link for this is in the description, and we are going to download the Windows 10 installation media tool. We are going to run this, and this is going to create a bootable USB stick for installing Windows 10. And the reason for this is because we want to use this uh, to create a bootable installer which doesn't have that version check. Um, you can do a similar thing uh, with the install files to do an upgrade install. Basically, we want to trick Windows into installing Windows 11 with the Windows 10 setup tool. Because they're very closely related, it works just fine. So what we're doing is we are going to just wait a moment and it will confirm the download that we want. So we want to create installation media. I want the UK, it really doesn't matter too much what you select for this as long as it's 64-bit, as Windows 11 is only available as 64-bit. And we are going to write to a USB flash drive and select the D drive here is the USB drive I've inserted. This will erase your USB stick, so obviously don't use it with one where you have anything important on it which you need to keep. I'm just going to fast forward this through as it's going to take some time to download, verify and write to the stick. So with that complete, we can now check our USB stick, so we want to close the Windows 10 setup there by hitting finish. And a USB stick is there ready to use. What we are then going to do is download uh, the Windows 11 ISO image, and I'm actually going to use the install media for this as well. Uh, just because this creates a smaller file and uh, for whatever reason, the Windows Media Creation FAT32 formats and the standard disk image ISO on this page uh, requires more than the maximum size, whereas the Media Creation tool creates a smaller ESD image which we can use. So we are going to go with the recommended options for this machine. However, we are just going to create the ISO file and we're going to save that to the desktop called windows.iso. So again, I will fast forward through this as uh, you don't want to watch the whole creation of that. So with that complete, we now have our ISO file on the desktop and our USB stick created. So what we need to do is we need to open up this ISO file just by double clicking and opening it in Explorer and go into the sources folder. And in here we have a file called install.esd. We are then also going to go onto the USB stick that we created earlier and go into sources on here and again find the install.esd file. So we are going to rename that to install.esd10. We don't mind that at all. And then from the ISO, so the Windows 11 one, we're going to find the install.esd and copy it to sources on our USB stick that we created earlier. This will take a minute or two just to copy. 
and then we are ready to begin our install. So even though this is uh, the Windows 10 installers that we're using, it will correctly install Windows 11. You could also use this technique, uh, as in my other video, to do an upgrade to an existing Windows uh, 10 install to get through to 11. And it is worth remembering that because these are unsupported, while you should get the base uh, security updates to Windows, you may find that when you get the feature updates that they can't necessarily automatically be installed and you have to go through a similar process or another way of doing this in future. But for now, for running the base version of Windows 11, this gets the job done. And so this is a uh, desktop system and with an ASUS board. So we are going to, when this completes, restart the system. Uh, depending on your computer, there will be different ways of choosing your bootable device. For example, uh, Dell laptops, I believe, tend to be F12. HP laptops tend to be F9. Um, desktop motherboards can be F10, F12, or in the case of this one, F8. So our USB stick is now ready. We have a Windows 10 installer with the Windows 11 install.esd file. So we are going to hit restart. And then as the computer restarts, so we will get a no signal from my capture card. And as soon as we get that, we are going to start pressing F8 on the keyboard. Like I say, you'll need to look up what the boot menu is on yours uh, or find a way of booting from USB. So hitting F8 here. And we then want to boot from the USB stick via UEFI. And this will boot the Windows installer. So we can see here we have the Windows 10 setup. But as we progress through, we say, I don't have a product key. And the versions of Windows offered to install are all Windows 11. So we're going to go with Windows 11 Home. We're going to accept the license agreement and choose to install. I'm going to just erase the SSD in the system as there's nothing on here that I need to retain. And we're doing a clean install and then hit next. And so there's been no uh, warning or error message that we are on a unsupported install because the installer is checking against the requirements for Windows 10, not Windows 11. And with that starting, again, I'm just going to fast forward things through to the completion of the installer. So now we can see that Windows 11 has installed and we are in the out of box experience uh, where we can set the system up. And while I'm doing this, I'm also going to just bypass the requirement for a Microsoft account. So we have an internet connection through ethernet as we're going through this setup. And then once that has completed checking for updates, And so after the system is updated, we're just going to skip naming, unplug our internet connection, and choose to create an account because there is no internet. It will allow us to just create a local account. Skip through these. And what we can see now, once we get to the desktop, and again, I'll just skip through this.
And so now our system has completed the install and we can see that we have Windows 10, uh, sorry, Windows 11 Home installed on our Core i5-7500.